My name's Herman Blumberg, and today I'm welcoming you to my school of rapid fat loss because all the time we're getting the extra schwitzing and schwetzing and yiching and yech. This is my pre-workout. Next time I see you, we're gonna be in the gym. What's going on? Welcome back to the vlog. Now, before we get into the Rapid Fat Loss 101 tutorial, which I'm really excited for you to see, I think you're gonna learn a lot there. I wanna walk you through my bodybuilding. So I'm on a brand new phase. Paul Carter is doing my programming. He's an amazing coach. The link to his Instagram is in the description of this video. And this is the first pull day of the new phase, okay? So pulling is gonna be back and biceps. Now we started off with a lat pull down with an upper back fo focus, more so than a lat focus. Then we went into what I call a bat wing row. I actually forget what Paul called this, but basically it's a chest supported dumbbell row. The thing to notice with this one though is my elbows are not very close to my side. I'm actually bringing them out very wide, get a little bit more rear delt and also a lot of rhomboid. After that, did a behind the back shrug on the Smith machine, which was, uh, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, not the biggest fan of this, not because I don't like the exercise, but just because my face looks so fucking stupid when I do shrugs. So we're gonna go with that one. And then the last exercise of the day was preacher curls with dumbbells. And this is what I wanna walk you through. Now, first and foremost, my biceps are not massive. I'm not a professional bodybuilder. So I understand if you're gonna be in the comments like, oh my God, your biceps aren't that big. I get it. I'm not that impressive to look at, but that's why I'm get, trying to get better right now. The thing that was really interesting about this, Paul and I had a discussion before this workout where he said, if something doesn't feel good for you, even if I wrote it in the instructions, I want you to change it. And basically, Paul had me doing the preacher curls over the other side, okay? So right now you can see I'm on the correct side of it with the 45 degree angle, but Paul actually wanted me on the other side so my arms would be straight down. The issue was the seat was in the way and it just didn't feel good. So I turned it around and it felt much better like this. That being said, what you'll see is my upper back is really, really rounded and my arms are still straight up and down. So I'm still getting the straight up and down motion that Paul wanted, it just felt better here. Now, a cue that Paul gave me that I loved was driving my elbows into the pad. When you drive your elbows into the pad, you create more stability for your biceps to really work. Otherwise, if they're sort of just loose on the pad, you don't have as much stability. There's moving all over the place and the biceps can't contract as hard as they could. And really focus on not curling your wrists, try and keep your wrists straight. And as you come up, rotate your pinkies inward. Okay, so you'll notice I start in a neutral grip position and then I come up into more of a supinated grip position and the contraction I was feeling was absolutely massive. Again, I know I don't have outrageously large biceps, but hopefully in the next year or so, we're gonna see some serious growth and improvement. And yeah, that was the first workout of this phase. Everything was just two sets, about eight to 10 reps, nothing crazy just to get a break in weekend. Again, if you don't follow Paul, definitely check his Instagram out, link in the description. And this is the, oh, now it's recording. Okay. Rico just had a lot of trouble recording. Yeah. Like, is that recording? Is it recording? I don't know why it's not recording, because he's watching too much, you know. <laughs> got some post-workout food. We got, I don't know what it's called. We got the bread, we got the cheese, we got the turkey, we got the tomato, we got the lettuce, we got the bread. Let's do that transition again. All right, so today we are talking about rapid fat loss. Yeah. Oh, wait, I have an idea. Baruch Noi Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. My name's Herman Blumberg, and today I'm welcoming you to my school of rapid fat loss because all the time we're getting the extra schwitzing and schwitzing and yiching and yech. 
later. All right, you know what? Let's just get into this. I do a lot of characters in my videos, so like the video if you enjoyed it so far, subscribe if you don't already, and let's get into talking about rapid fat loss. I do not recommend that most people, I don't know why I'm writing the number, but I'm gonna write it and we're gonna keep it there. I don't recommend that most people start off with a rapid fat loss protocol. Most people, when they come to me and they're like, I wanna start with a rapid fat loss protocol, I usually say stick to something more sustainable for 90 days. If after 90 days you're consistent with it and you still want to do a rapid fat loss protocol, go for it. But if you are just starting out and you haven't been consistent with anything yet and you just wanna jump right into a rapid fat loss protocol, odds are you're just looking for the quick fix. And that's when people end up going back and forth, back and forth, yo-yoing up and down, perpetually going through this cycle of losing weight, gaining it, losing it, gaining it. For most people, I would say start with something sustainable for 90 days. If after 90 days you want to, go for it. Usually after 90 days, you don't even want to because you're realizing what progress comes from and that you can continue on that path rather than doing anything extreme. Now, the second disclaimer, we're just gonna stay with the theme and write the number. The second disclaimer is it actually does work very well, especially in an obese population. And if you look in the scientific literature, right now, number one, a lot of people in the mainstream media, in the nutrition community, automatically hate on rapid fat loss protocols. They say they're stupid, they have no time in place, and for me, I try and stay more in the middle because very rarely is anything black and white. And if you look in the obese population, the very, very, very overweight population, people have a lot to lose and are struggling to get motivated to start to get started. In a very obese population, it actually does work well. Number one, because they need to lose a lot more quickly because they have a lot to lose and it can be very dangerous. And number two, it works really well because it kickstarts motivation. They lose a lot very quickly and they get kickstarted right away. But what I would say here, and this I would say is like a sub disclaimer within this, is you have to prepare them ahead of time to let them know that amount of progress is not going to be maintainable. That rapid progress will not happen forever. Sooner rather than later, they will have to taper off into something more sustainable. If you don't tell them this beforehand, then they're gonna have unrealistic expectations and they'll expect this rapid progress forever, which is why then a lot of people, they have trouble switching to something more sustainable because they don't wanna stop, stop losing that quick progress and then they end up getting demotivated and going back to their old habits. And the last disclaimer, and this is the most important one, so please, please, please pay attention. This is very important. Rapid fat loss protocols are definitely 100% without a shadow of a doubt, not for people with a history of disordered eating. If you have food anxiety, if you struggle with binge eating, if you struggle with anorexia, with bulimia, with anything related to food that causes you anxiety, do not even try, don't even think about attempting this. It's not worth it. And I'll tell you this, I struggled with anorexia, I struggled with food anxiety, I struggled with binge eating for a long time growing up. It's been years and years and years and years and years since I've struggled with it, but I still will not attempt this for me personally. Not because I know it will start anything, it will, like, it will spark any bad habits, but because I don't wanna risk it. I very well might be able to do this right now, but why bother? It's not worth risking getting sparked into this bad habit, this bad cycle, if you've already struggled with it or if you're struggling with it right now. And I think especially if you're struggling with it right now, it's very enticing. It's very like, oh, like I could try this and this will be a quicker fix. This will be a faster route to achieving my goals. But you have to remember, physical goals are not the single most important. They're not all that matter. Mental goals do too. And if your relationship with food is not healthy, your physical relationship with food will not be healthy either. The mental relationship and the physical relationship, they're intertwined. And if you are not in a place mentally or emotionally in which you could handle this, in which you're still struggling with food anxiety, you're still struggling with binge eating, you're still struggling with anorexia, please like, just don't even, don't even watch it. Don't watch this video. It's not worth it for you. Okay, now before we get into when and how and how long and all the specifics, I wanna talk about the pros and cons, and I have a feeling that a lot of people are gonna skip ahead because who wants to listen to the pros and cons? Please, I'm looking at you. Do not skip ahead, it's really important, especially if you are wanting to do rapid fat loss yourself or if you're trying to coach people through it safely and effectively. I wanna talk about this because I wanna continue the discussion in the comment section. If I don't say a pro that you think of or I don't say a con that you think of or you have a question about something I said, ask in the comment section. I want this to be very open and very honest. I think this is a specific topic that is under discussed, which is dangerous because a lot of people are doing this whether you like it or not. And a lot of fitness professionals are hating on this topic, just black and white, it's bad, you shouldn't do it ever. The reality is that's not true. You look in the research, it does benefit some people and if people are gonna do it anyway, 
we should be educated on how to help them do it safely and effectively. So the most important positive aspect of rapid phallus protocols, in my opinion, is the motivation aspect. And I wanna explain that, so brief aside, how do you get motivated? What's the science of it? How does someone actually get motivated to do something? I call it Dumbledore's loop, but it looks like this. Before you get motivated, you have to take action. You have to do something. It's hard, it's difficult, it's not fun. You'd way rather sit in bed watching Netflix or take a nap than you would go to the gym or get up and meal prep. But you have to take that action, that first step to do something. Then from there, you see results. And then from those results that you see, that's when you get motivated. And that's how it works. Maybe we can put like a graph up on the screen. Action first, results second, motivation third, and then that leads in the circle that continues to go. With that knowledge, we can understand why rapid fat loss might work so well, especially in an overweight, obese population. A lot of times these people are living in a headspace in which they haven't been able to succeed their whole life or for years and years and years. They might not actually believe they can succeed. They might not believe this is gonna work for them. They might have tried everything under the sun and just nothing seemed to work. And in that scenario, rapid fat loss can be very very, very beneficial because what they'll do is, as you know, they'll start a rapid fat loss protocol and they'll lose a lot of weight and a lot of weight very quickly. It's dramatic. And when they see that result very quickly, a lot of times that, that starts to improve their belief in themselves, their own, their self-efficacy. And when you believe more in yourself, that's when you can start to do things more sustainably. That's when you can start to see the benefit of doing something long-term, not just short-term. So what I would say is this, if you have somebody or if you yourself are about to do a rapid fat loss protocol and you're very overweight or you have a lot to lose, understand number one, that that rapid result will not last forever, nor should you expect it to, nor should you try for it to. But a brief period of rapid fat loss, which I'll discuss in the third section, a brief period of rapid fat loss to lose a lot of weight very quickly can help you get motivated for the long term because you'll see that initial success. All right, so the second positive aspect of rapid fat loss protocols is something called self-efficacy. And I mentioned this in the first one, but I wanna expand on it a little bit because if you understand self-efficacy and how to improve it, you can help yourself and a lot of other people. It's really amazing. I also, I would encourage you to do more research on it. It's called self-efficacy, and if you look into it, you'll find a lot of research has been done on how improving someone's self-efficacy can radically improve not only their ability to succeed in various tasks, but also just improve their self-confidence, improve how much they love themselves, improve how much they value themselves, which for me is, it's invaluable. The definition of self-efficacy is your belief in yourself to accomplish a given task. So very similar to self-confidence, but a little bit different. The way that rapid fat loss can help with that is basically by showing you that you can succeed. And I think that's a lot of times where sustainable protocols, they lack a little bit. Because so many coaches are like, and myself included, I, I'm in this grouping, so many coaches will go out of their way to say, it's very slow and very steady, and sometimes you won't see progress happening. And I agree with that. I wanna be very forthright. I agree. When you're working with someone who has a very, very, very low self-efficacy, they don't believe that they can do it. It can be very difficult for them much more difficult than for other people to go through a period of time, be it a week or a month, without seeing much progress and justify continuing, especially when they're battling a lifetime or just simply years of not seeing results and ingraining poor habits. You have to understand if you're a very sustainably focused coach, sustainable lifestyle focused coach, as I am, you have to try and open your, your viewpoint, open your perspective and say, okay, listen, I'm working with people who are coming from a, a place in their life in which they might not actually believe they can succeed. It would be very beneficial to show them that they can succeed very quickly at the beginning and then taper them into something more sustainable after that once that belief in, the, in themselves has increased, that self-efficacy. And that's why rapid fat loss protocols can really help elevate it in the short term and then your job as a coach is to help maintain that or continue to increase it long term. So those are the two positive sides. You have motivation, you have self-efficacy, you put those together, that can lead to long-term results. But the cons are very obvious. Number one being that rapid fat loss is not in and of itself sustainable long-term. I think one of the biggest issues is people will go into rapid fat loss with the idea that, oh yeah, I'll just do this and then I'll just transfer into something else. I'll do something more healthy once rapid fat loss is over. And it sounds nice. It's sort of like when people are like, yeah, I'm gonna do the juice cleanse for seven days first, lose a lot of weight, and then I'll transfer to something more healthy once that's over. That doesn't usually work. And the reason it doesn't work is because they just say, I'll transfer to something more healthy without a plan 
for what actually is going to happen. And that's where people really miss out, which is why I really want to say when you do a rapid fat loss protocol for yourself or for clients, you have to prepare ahead of time for what you're going to do once it's over. You have to have a defined deadline for how long it's going to be and a plan for once it's over. Obviously, the major con being it's not sustainable, but just because it's not sustainable doesn't mean it can't be part of an overall sustainable plan. The next con is that it's really fucking hard. Rapid fat loss is very difficult because clearly you're gonna be eating way fewer calories. If you know you're the kind of person who does not do well on very, very, very few calories, it's not worth trying. You just know that, you know that about yourself. But if you also know that you're the kind of person who does do well with very strict, very rigid guidelines, and you can do that for a brief period of time and it might give you more motivation, go for it. You're gonna be really hungry, straight up you are going to be very hungry. You're probably gonna get very tired. Maybe not the first couple days, it's sort of an interesting part of it. Sometimes when people first start doing it, they get increased energy. A lot of times because they're not putting shit down their body like they usually do. Initially, you might have energy spike, and then more tired, more hungry, more lethargic, might get more cravings, and that's why you can't do this long term. It's really hard, and anyone who says otherwise, they're fucking lying. And then the other really big con in my book is that it's not good for people with a history of disordered eating, with a history of food anxiety, with a history of binge eating. And I'm gonna hammer this home. I actually, I spoke about this a lot in my intermittent fasting video, which I have a full video course on. If you haven't seen it, link is in the description. I hammer on it a lot in each video because I think it's more common than people think. A lot of people who struggle with binge eating, they feel like they're the only one, which is one of the reasons why they do it in private. A lot of people who struggle with food anxiety, they don't talk about it. It's not something that people discuss openly on social media. And I really wanna hammer it home because on the off chance that you're watching this video and that you're struggling with it, number one, you're not alone. And number two is, I'm speaking directly to you, do not do this. If you struggle with food anxiety, if you struggle with binge eating, if you struggle with any disordered eating habits, it is not worth it because it will only perpetuate it. Okay, Irene, I get it. Hold on, I'll tell him. I'll tell him right now, I'll tell him right now. Okay, listen, I know we're in the middle of the video, I'm sorry. My wife, Irene, she really wants you to like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, please subscribe. And there's a bell, little bell thing, ding dong, ding dong. Click the bell, get notified when a new video comes out. Anyway, I'll get back to Irene now. Keep watching the video. I love you. Talk to you soon. Okay, Irene, I told him. All right, so now for the fun stuff. Now we're gonna get into actually how you can do rapid fat loss if it's for you, okay? So number one, when should you do it? For me, you have a couple opportunities. First and foremost, if you are very, very, very overweight and you have a lot of weight to lose, you want to do it very quickly just for extra motivation. That's basically at the start of your fitness journey, at the start of your fat loss journey, at the start of all of this. I would not recommend doing it once you've already been losing weight for a long period of time. And that's actually when a lot of people decide they want to. It's ironic, a lot of people, they'll they'll start doing something and then they'll hit a plateau. Look at this plateau, like I'm not really losing weight, I, I've plateaued. You haven't plateaued, but after a long period of time, you're gonna lose weight more slowly. People, I'm plateaued, you're not plateaued, you're just going more slowly and that's why a lot of people will they'll try and then ra radically decrease calories further for a rapid fat loss, it's the worst time to do it. You're already in a deficit, you're already losing motivation, you're already in a place where you're getting distracted and oftentimes wanting to go off plan. Going more strict is the worst thing you can do. Oftentimes in that scenario, you actually wanna increase calories for a bit just to take a little mental break from dieting. At the start of a diet, just to get more motivation and things rolling, that's when I would suggest it. Also, and this is a very small percentage of the population, but if you're an athlete, and you're in a weight controlled sport, powerlifting, fighting, something along those lines, where you have to make weight for a competition, then you can think about doing a rapid fat loss protocol leading up to your weigh-ins. I already have a full article on that. I wrote for Juggernaut Training Systems. I'll put that in the description, so I'm not gonna go into detail. Mainly, this is for, pe for people who are just starting out with fitness, have a lot of weight to lose, and wanna get going very, very quickly just to kickstart with motivation. So when we're talking about how long you should do a rapid fat loss protocol, this is where it depends. Now, the usual question that people will have to follow this up is, am I going to ruin my metabolism by eating at too low of a calorie deficit for too long? And number one is, your body is very good at recovering from eating low calories. Yes, your metabolism will slow down if you eat very low calorie for a very long time. Research shows that as you increase your calories, your metabolism will fix itself. It goes back to normal, so that's a good thing. The issue though is mentally. People really struggle mentally after a long period of time in a very low calorie diet to feel their fullness signals and to have a healthy relationship with food. 
which is why a lot of times, for example, a really good, really good practical example of this is people who have done figure competitions, bodybuilding competitions. One of the things you'll see, and this comes from working with a lot of them, they'll be very, very, very strict. A lot of times very low calorie. And after the competition, once there's no more, some, not a show that they have to prepare for, they have serious binge eating. They have serious issues getting full. And you'll see them, a lot of times they'll post on their story, like all the things that they're eating. And when you actually discuss with them in person, they'll talk like, I just can't get full. I'll just keep eating, I'll just keep eating. And they have these huge rebounds. And I'll clarify, it's not every single one of them. You can do these shows and have a healthy relationship, but you do see it in a lot of those competitors. It is more common than a lot of people would think, which is unfortunate. But anyway, you will not destroy your metabolism but you do run the risk of really creating a lot of mental issues and anxieties around food. And that's what I wanna really make sure we stay away from, okay? Which is why, again, if you struggle with food anxiety or binge eating, do not do this. How long should you be in a calorie deficit if you're doing a very rapid fat loss protocol? There's a huge range, okay? So generally speaking, the shortest amount of time I would do, 72 hours, like three days. That's if you're going very, very, very low. The longest amount of time for any one stretch is probably up to a month, 30 days. There's no reason really to do much longer than that. I have seen some people who are morbidly obese, very, very, very unhealthy. I have, them, I have seen them go longer uh, in a medically supervised situation scenario and that can work but for me personally as a coach I don't really recommend it what I would do instead go for example two weeks or three weeks rapid fat loss and then take two weeks or three weeks to go back to maintenance or even just in increase calories slightly you can still be in a deficit while slightly increasing your calories basically going from a very rapid fat loss protocol to more sustainable very rapid sustainable I call that like the jab approach where the Hail Mary is basically just going in a sustainable deficit for a long period of time. The jab approach is just where you do short stints of rapid fat loss followed by something more sustainable. And that way you give yourself that mental and emotional break also while still getting that, those stints of rapid fat loss. So what I'm gonna do is when we get to here, I'm gonna explain how I would recommend structuring your calories and I use something called an ascending caloric schema just to reiterate for how long you should go. Shortest amount of time is about 72 hours, three days all the way up to 30 days. And that's in any one stretch of time. But if you wanna do different stints, you can do that as well. All right, so now, how many calories should you be eating if you're trying to do a rapid fat loss protocol? Number one, as I wanna tell you, if you aren't trying to do a rapid fat loss protocol, and you just wanna know how many calories you should eat to be in a calorie deficit, click the link in my description. I have a full video tutorial explaining exactly how to find out how many calories you should eat on a more sustainable diet. If we're doing a rapid fat loss, it's obviously gonna be a little bit lower. Now here's a range. This isn't a definitive, this is just a general range, all right? Personally, I use goal body weight, and I explained the goal body weight in that calorie deficit video. It requires a lot of explanation, so go click, go watch that video, because I fully explain all of the questions you'll have about goal body weight, like, what if I don't wanna weigh a certain amount of weight, or what if I don't get to that amount of weight, or like, what if that amount of weight sort of triggers me? Go watch the video, I explain all of it, all right? I would take your goal body weight, and multiply it by eight. That's the general number that I use. It could be seven, it could be six if you really wanna go faster. It could be nine or it could be 10 if you wanna go a little bit more slowly and be a little bit more sustainable with it. Eight is a general round number you could go for. So for example, if your goal body weight is 150, and you multiply 150 by eight, that's 1200 calories. That would be your rapid fat loss calories that you would be hitting. And again, just in case you ended up skipping the entire video and just seeing this one part, this is for a very, very short time frame. I do not recommend doing this for a long time. So if anyone's gonna be like, I can't believe you're recommending, recommending 1200 calories, shut the fuck up, watch the whole video, relax. I'm not recommending it forever. It's a very brief period of time. Now, how much protein? Generally speaking, one gram per pound of your goal body weight. So if your goal body weight's 150 pounds, eat 150 grams of protein in that day. That's plenty. If you wanna eat more, go for it. It's gonna be difficult because the calories are gonna be so low. I would say 150 grams is a very, it's safe. And also you wanna make sure you're eating a lot of protein, especially in a rapid fat loss phase, because you wanna do the best that you possibly can to maintain your muscle mass. You're not gonna be building muscle in this phase. Just, it's not gonna happen. Maintain as much muscle as possible by eating as much protein as you can. You still wanna lift weights, by the way. You shouldn't be doing it four, five, six, seven days a week. Three days a week here is plenty. You're not gonna have a lot of energy, Three days a week of strength training based workouts is fantastic. I'll put a basic beginner strength workout, a link to a video that I have in the description so you can watch that if you're a beginner. If you're more intermediate to advanced, you might wanna consider my inner circle. The link to that is in my description as well. Now I wanna to talk to you about something that I haven't seen anyone else do. I call it an ascending caloric schema. Basically in the example I just used, the 150 by eight, you'd be eating 1200 calories every day. What you might find and what you will find is that usually when you just start 
a new diet, rapid fat loss or not. It's easiest at the beginning because your motivation is very high. Your motivation is high, you're ready to go. But as you go, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, whatever it is, motivation will dwindle a little bit and it can get harder to stick to calories, especially if they're lower. What a lot of people do is they start at their highest possible calories and then they reduce them as they go. But if that's going in line with your motivation, you're reducing your calories as your motivation is dwindling, it's a recipe for failure. You're not gonna wanna eat fewer calories as your motivation is going down. So I actually do the opposite. I start with a lower calorie recommendation at the beginning, because that's when your motivation is highest. And then progressively increase your calories over time as your motivation is going down so that it gets easier and easier and easier. And keep in mind, just because you're increasing calories doesn't mean you're not still in a calorie deficit. Let's say we use that 150 by eight scenario. We have 1200. So you start off at 1200 calories. You do that for the first week. Then maybe the second week, you go up to 1350. Then the third week, you go up to 1500. Then the fourth week, you go up to 1650 or 1700. You're still in a calorie deficit. You're not doing rapid fat loss anymore, but you've stayed in a calorie deficit, sustainably increasing it over time. And as your motivation has gone down, you've allowed yourself to eat more. The first week, you'll see the most rapid fat loss. From there, it will get progressively slower, but you'll still be making fat loss progress. And I love this. I love this strategy because most people, as they go on, they lose their motivation. They just end up eating more. They don't stick to the habits that they want to stick to. By doing this, by increasing your calories, you allow yourself to eat more. You give yourself almost something to look forward to week after week, whereas the other way, it gets worse and worse and worse every week. And you could do something like this on cycle over and over and over again. You could literally do three months in a row. Week one, 1,200. Week two, 1,400. Week three, 1,500. Week four, 1,700. Cycle back the following month. You do that for three months in a row, you'll consistently be in a calorie deficit the first week of each month being a little bit more rapid and more difficult and progressively getting easier over time. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'm more than happy to make a follow-up video with Q&A that you would have for rapid fat loss. So let's, any questions you have, put them in the comment section. We'll do a wrap up, uh, a follow-up Q&A video. And in the meantime, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you do not already. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Wait, 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 Baruch Hashem, hold on for me one second before you leave. When you subscribe, hit the notification bell. There's a bell, ding dong, ding dong. Hit the bell, you get notified when a video comes up. It would mean the world to me. God bless, have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.